Yeah. We're gonna pray for you anyway. So I'll already be ready. We'll have the doctors ready. You'll be ready. It seems like it's been going on forever. Yeah. All right. All right. Are there others? Yes, my daughter-in-law Sarah's had an uncle who died in South Carolina, so they're all down there now. So get them there and get them back. That's right. Safely. Safely. Safe travel. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, we just praise you and thank you for just a wonderful week, um, for keeping us safe and well, dear Lord. Just please be with the ones who are suffering from COVID. Just strengthen them. Give their bodies the strength and the power to just endure and to get well, dear Lord, and just to heal and bring them back to complete health. We just pray for the ones that we've mentioned this morning who have lost loved ones. Just be with them. Touch them. Give them peace, give them comfort, and just put your loving arms around them. For those that are having procedures today or will be having procedures um, or surgeries, dear Lord, just please be with the doctors. Put your hands on their hands and just guide them that they will um, do the procedures correctly and that the procedures will be successful. And we just pray for healing for the, the people who are having those procedures, dear Lord. Just help them to return to complete health. We just pray for all the ones that we've mentioned this morning, dear Lord. Um, just the praise for Michael. We give you the glory and the praise for all of that and all the things that have, they have had to endure and Michael's had to endure. Thank you for bringing them through that. Thank you for bringing him through that with a positive mind and just him keeping his focus on you and the entire family just keeping their focus on you and knowing that you're in control. And I pray that we will do the same thing. There are things going on in our lives. We know of people who have things going on, just please help us to keep you at the forefront of our minds and just know that you are in control and you will take care of us. We just give you the glory and the praise for all the wonderful things that has happened to us this week that we've been able to have and to learn and to do. We give you the glory and the praise for it all. And we pray that you'll please be with us this morning as we study your word. Just open our hearts and minds to receive a blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so this morning, our lesson again, we're going continuing on in Luke, and I'm going to be referring to our student manual, so please have it out if you have it. If not, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be looking at the scripture in your Bibles in Luke, but this morning I gave you a mirror, and I would like for you to take out that mirror. If you don't have a mirror, I've got some extras back here, but you can use your cell phone and put it on the selfie mode. So that you can see yourself in your cell phone. All right, I just want you to look at yourself. All right, just take it out. Look at you. I see some people adjusting their hair. Yeah. With my mask. Yeah, adjusting your mask. Now we do different things with a mirror than we used to. Like, where's the mask? Where's the mask? Is that good? Say it again. A little bit more. Is that good? All right. All right. So what do you see in this mirror? Myself. You see yourself. All right. Now what I want you to think about is what do you see about yourself? You got it right? Um, you got it? Okay. Who's getting it? Because that's the first thing you do when you have a mirror is you adjust whatever, you know, your eyebrows, your makeup, your hair. Um, but what do you truly see about yourself? You, see um, what, you, see you didn't have to say that. Sagging skin. You see what others see. Wrinkles. My hair. That you're losing your hair. The gray in your hair. And you see what others see. You see what others see. All right? So when you look at yourself, you're seeing what others see. Now, you're pretty much telling me your physical appearance. I want you to think about what do other people see and what do you see? I really want to know at this point, what do you see when you look at yourself? Do you see a well-educated person? Do you see a smart person? Do you see a person who has a great job? Do you see a person who does not have a job? Do you see someone who's healthy and feels well? Do you see someone who is sick and you don't feel that well? Do you see someone with a positive attitude? 
So think, I'll give you a couple seconds to think about what you truly see in this person that you're looking at. All right, so look at it again. And don't look at your physical appearance. Just think about who do you see as a person. And maybe some, the, some attributes about yourself. All right, because we're going to take a look back at the end of this as well at that mirror and see if you see the same person. All right, now I want you to think about how does the image that we see in a mirror encourage us and discourage us at the same time? Now, you pretty much said it a while ago, because I'm encouraged. I think somebody said, I think Rupert said, that I am here today. I was able to get out of my bed, and I actually see myself in this mirror today. All right? Then someone had a discouraging thought. I'm sagging in this part of my skin. This is wrinkled. This is gray. So it's encouraging, but discouraging at the same time. Are there any other encouraging yet discouraging things when you look in that mirror? My, my eyes see apparently who I am. My mind doesn't see that. I see myself going by in a, in a store window saying, who is that? What's me? But I, I, my mind hadn't gotten that old. <laughs> but my body has. I mean, I don't, right. I, you know, mm -hmm. I think, oh my gosh. Exactly. So. That's encouraging, but then discouraging. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? When you look at it, it's encouraging, but yet can be discouraging at the same time. You're older than you think you are. Yeah. You're older than you think you are. Yeah. And that's good. I'll tell you, I didn't, it wasn't a picture. It was actually a girl taking a picture. I had her, it was the fall festival time, and she took a picture of the, um, if y'all remember at Halloween, I was dressed up as a witch, and I had a bunch of, uh, spiders on me. So she, at school, she drew a spider on my face, and I said, well, I can't see it. She said, okay, I'll take a picture of it. So she took a picture of it, and I looked at it, and you know, the only thing I saw was all the crow lines exactly. on this side of my face. I'm like, what in the world? So I've gone and bought some of that retinol stuff, and I started putting it on there. So I thought, this is too many wrinkles for, for this. And I couldn't even see the spider for all the wrinkles. And I actually looked like he had extra legs. Right. And I was like, oh my gosh, what in the world is happening? All right, so we're going to look back at this mirror, mirror, but I want it to encourage you, and I want us to look at it yourself in a different way today. Are we worthy? That's the question. When you look in that mirror, are you worthy? All right, and today our main point is that God welcomes those who approach him in humble and simple faith. All right, so as I told you, we're going to continue with the parables in Luke. And guess who's our primary target today? If you've read your lesson, you will know it's the Pharisees. All right, and Jesus is teaching and the Pharisees regularly looked down on people who did not, in their minds or in their measurements, come close to fulfilling the strict requirements of the law. You know, there were a lot of people that they looked down on, a lot of groups of people that they looked down on. And this is one region, reason that, G, that they enraged, that Jesus enraged them. Because he would talk and be with all kinds of people, not just the Pharisees or people who were like them. And this parable is going to remind us that God welcomes all people from all backgrounds, no matter who they are. While the outer appearances of the religious leaders made them look like they were right with God, Jesus made clear that that was not the case. So you today have looked at your outer appearance. During this lesson, I want you to think about your inner appearance. What comes through when people truly see you? Now, they see you on the outside. 
They see what your physical appearance is. They even see some of the, the things that you do. But what is coming from the inside? What is on the inside? And that's what I want us to think about today. All right, because Jesus cares about those who are often deemed insignificant. Now, I want you to think about what are some things that you, ways you feel about yourself that makes you significant? Who could you say about yourself when you look in that mirror? And I said some of these things at the beginning that would make you feel significant. Okay. That's, that's where my um, self worth is. You know, I tell myself, I mean, I believe that, <clears throat> that that's my self worth is what God has given me by His grace. Okay. And he has made me through Christ. All right. That's where we're going. But, and you're exactly right. That's what we want to get to at the end. But what do you see right now when you look at yourself to make you significant in this world? Not in God's sight, but in this world. I get up every day and I go and I do. Yes, that you're able to go exactly. and do. And, exactly. Okay? That I have a job. A good job. All right? Those of you who, who have been to college, that you have a college degree. Some of you have positions in the community. I am this on this community, on this committee. I am this on this committee. And in this organization. So there are some things that make you significant. All right? Just like the Pharisees, they felt significant. But God cares for all people. Not only the significant, but the insignificant. All right? If you will turn on page 30, we're going to start looking at this scripture more in depth about the Pharisees. And there's two characters in this Story, the Pharisees and the tax collector. And I'm going to start reading from Luke 18, verses 9 through 12. And it says, He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee was standing and praying like this about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Greedy, unrighteous, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. How does that make you feel when you read that? Too many eyes. Yeah. This is what I, 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 I just, I was just broken hearted. I'm like, oh my Lord, what has this man missed? I mean, just think of all the things that he has missed. Does he truly know who God is? Does he have a relationship with him? Because this is not how it goes. But if you look, he's doing the right things. What are the right things that he's doing? The first thing is he went to the what? He went to the temple. So the location that he went to is very admirable that you would go to the temple. All right, what's the next thing he did? He was praying. He was praying. Yes, what is what we should do? Pray to God. All right, he was standing and praying like this. How? About himself. He's very proud about himself. Very proud. All right, and while we're there, let's look. If you've got your Bibles, look at, since you said proud, um, God rejects the proud. All right, and let's see where that is. In James 4, verses 6, through, 6 and 10, it says this, But he gives us more grace. This is why Scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. All right, now look at 1 Peter 5, 5.
In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. So he was very proud. It was all about I. Now, when you looked in that mirror, didn't you say, I see this, I have this, I look like this. But the question I want you to ask yourself today is, what are other people seeing in you? What do they see when they look at you? We very seldom look at our own selves in a mirror, but people are seeing us every day. And are we being the mirror of Jesus that he would have other people to see in us? All right, so let's look at your page at the bottom of page 30. So the Pharisee compares himself, it says, to the tax collectors. Now, tax collectors, what are some names that we have known and studied in Scripture about tax collectors? What are some characteristics or words to describe them? They're greedy. Greedy. They were considered traitors. Considered traitors. Thieves. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Was they stole from people because they tell you your taxes were this and you would pay and they keep some for themselves and the other would go for your taxes. So they had a very bad name. Um, they were considered unrighteous and even adulterous. Now the Pharisees were some of the most highly regarded citizens in the area. I mean, you could look up to them as your model citizens. The Pharisee exalted himself about all of his religious accomplishments. What were some of his religious accomplishments? He fasted and tithed. I fast twice a week. I tithe with everything I get. And what did he say he was not like? He compares himself to the tax collector and said, I'm not like them, I'm not like them. Now, how many of us have done that exact same thing? I may do so-and-so, but I don't do so-and-so like he does or she does. So we're guilty of doing the same thing. I may do so-and-so, but I've definitely not done so-and-so like John did. So we compare ourselves the same way. Now, not only did he tithe with everything he received, he fasted twice a week, and you might have seen that the Pharisees were more honorable than other people. But, if you look on your page 31, and I'm on the, first, the third paragraph down, by all external qualifications, this Pharisee was a good man. And how many people do you know that are good people? who do the right things but are going to burst hell wide open. Right things for the wrong reasons. They do the right things for the wrong reasons. And that's exactly what happened in this scripture. Or they do the right things but their heart is not right. We can do all of these right things. What we're doing right now, sitting in this church, coming every Sunday at 9.45, coming every Sunday at 11 o'clock, teaching a Sunday school class, singing in the choir, doing whatever it is we do, serving on committees. But that's not going to get us to heaven. We have got to have that <coughs> right relationship with, with God. And it's easy as ABC. We teach that in Bible school. Admit that we're a sinner. Believe in God and confess our sins. That's all you got to do. You do not have to do all these things. But the Pharisee was doing all of these things as an outward appearance that made him look good. So on the outside, he looked like a very good man. But his heart was not right with God. So when you look at that mirror, what do you see on the outside? Do you see a very good woman? A very good man? But what do you see on the inside? Is your heart right with God? Are you doing the right things for the right reasons? 
Are you here as for a show? Because that's what the Pharisee did. It was all a show. <clears throat> so are we here for a show? Because if you're here for a show, you may as well pull the curtain. Because the show is over. It's all about what we need to be closer to God and what we need to do to be closer to God. And when we are close to God, then we do all of these things that people do see. But we've got to do them for the right reason. All right, the scripture, and what I want to say too was, he was doing the God talk. But what was he not doing? The God walk. Now that wasn't in here. The author did talk about the God talk. And, and he's right. He's got the God talk down. But do you have the God walk down? And that's what I want us to think about ourselves. Do I have the God talk down? But the question is, what do other people see in their mirror of me the rest of the week? Do they see the God walk that I have? Or is that something they only see on Sunday at church? Because I have a lot of eyes looking at me every day. Adult eyes and children eyes. And it's an awesome, when I really sit and think about it, it brings tears to my eyes. Because you never know when someone is looking at you as that mirror of who Jesus is. I'll never forget when I first moved here. Um... We were in doing some things in the old sanctuary, and my car was pulled up closer to the road so people riding by could actually see the car. Well, I had some children at school to tell me that they saw me at church. And I said, how did you, how do you know that was me at church? Stupid me, what's on the back of my car on my license plate? If anybody knows my car. Well, ECU mom is on the front, but guess what's on the back? Mazelle. <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah. And they said, because I saw your car, it's got Miss Mazelle on the back. Well, it didn't have Miss Mazelle, it just has Mazelle. Uh, but it had Miss Mazelle on the back. And that really gets you to thinking, you know, how I had no clue that children would ride by and see my car and know and put together that I was at church. And because they know I was at church, guess what? I've got to live like I was at church. I've got to talk like I was at church. I've got to act like I was at church. And I think some people miss that connection. Just like this Pharisee. He did the right things. He went to church. He stood and prayed. And I can imagine him stay, standing and praying just like this with his eyes towards heaven, in the correct posture even for praying. But he didn't have the heart that was right to do the right things because of who he knew in his heart as Jesus Christ. So I want you to think about your life as a mirror for other people. What are other people seeing in that mirror? You may be the only way that they see Jesus. And if they know you come to church, they're going to be wanting to see what this church thing is all about. Do they want it or do they not? And by the way we live, somebody will say, if that's what church is all about, I don't need that. I'm better than that. All right, so look on your page 32. What practices, is the first question at the top of the page, what practices might a person point to today to announce their righteousness? And I just named some of them. What's the one we're doing right now? Attending church. I attend Sunday school. I attend worship service. I attend Wednesday night service. Sunday night service. What is something else that we can use to announce our righteousness? Offering. Say it again. Offering. offering. I bring an offering every Sunday. I attend the choir. I sing in the choir every Sunday. I attend choir practice. I teach a Sunday school class. I'm a 
deacon. I'm a deacon. I'm on this committee, this committee, this committee. Yeah, I'm on 16 <laughs> committees at church. I'm on the Meals on Wheels. I do the tape ministry. And it can be community things as well because you're righteous because, you know, when somebody's sick, I take a pie every time they're sick. <laughs> if somebody has a baby, I'm taking a goodie box. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you need a, a, a dirty box. <laughs> all right, so we're, you know, but you see what I'm saying? Like, I do all of these things, all right? Because we, it's almost like we can justify ourselves because of how good we are. But what is the saying? There are going to be some good people in hell mm -hmm. that do every one of those things you just named. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have your heart right. What does your heart look like on the inside? That's where we need to have that mirror. The mirror needs to be looking at your heart. And don't just look at the outward things, the external things. Because all those things we just named are external. All right, let's keep going. Godly humility is the name of the next scripture. And it says, but the tax collector, now you just, you've got the picture of the Pharisee. And he's standing, probably eyes face towards heaven, just praying all about himself and all the good things that he's done. But the tax collector, who's the other character in this parable, standing far off. Now I can see that the Pharisee, he's right here. At the center of the temple. Where do you think the tax collector is? He's off in the corner. He's off in the corner or he's back there at the very back. Standing off. It says, but the tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven. But kept striking his chest and saying, God have mercy on me. A sinner. I tell you, and these are Jesus' words, so listen. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other. Because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. So, how can a person's own perceived goodness get in the way of humbly confessing his or her sins to God? It's probably the main thing that gets in the way. Um, I think most folks have this idea, like the Pharisee, that if my good outweighs my bad, as if God sat in heaven with a pair of scales, mm -hmm. and it's all your good deeds and good thoughts and good whatever on one side, and all your evil deeds and your evil thoughts and your whatever on the other. And whichever way that the scale tips, that decides whether you go to heaven or hell. But that's not And that's what the world perceives, is that the better we are, the more we're going to heaven. Those people are going to heaven. And like he said, in fact, the author in this book somewhere talks about the 
uh, the scale and the balance that people say, okay, I do this, 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 okay, I'm good, I'm going to heaven. And I don't do this and this and this and this like these other people who are not going to heaven. No, we do not stack up. Aren't you so glad that by grace you are saved? Because we sin every day. Can you imagine the stack of sins that we would have? My good would not outweigh my bad. But by grace, God saves me from all of those sins Amen. and will forgive me for all of those sins. Amen. 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 That's right. All right. So the second character in the story is the tax collector. So what is his posture? What does he look like as he's coming into the temple? He's far away. Where are his eyes? Down. Down. You know, he doesn't even feel worthy enough to look up to God. But can you just see the Pharisee? He's proud. He's looking up to God and just so excited about all of his accomplishments and all the things that he's done. I doubt that the tax collector even wanted to be recognized in the temple. Exactly. And yet mm -hmm. he came to exalt God while the Pharisee came to exalt himself. himself. The exactly tax collector right. wanted to stay aside. Mm -hmm. Probably did not want to be recognized because everybody hated him. <laughs> everybody knew him. Nobody trusted him and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And yet he subjected himself to all of that possible ridicule and rejection to stand before God in the temple humbly. Exactly. And two, you made me think of a point. Um, how many people have you said, heard say, I'm not good enough for God to accept me into his kingdom? No, we are learning today, God's kingdom is for everyone who asks and accepts them as their savior. It's not for those who do the good things. And like you were saying, um, the Pharisee was doing the talk and doing all of the right things. And the tax collector did not even feel worthy to almost even walk in the door. I can see him just sneaking in like at the very back. Just barely being in the temple. Um, but at, let's look at this tax collector. So it says, while the Pharisees utilized his public prayers to praise himself before others, the tax collector's prayers were a plea for God's grace. And that's what we should have, a plea for God's grace, for the things that we have done wrong. Yes, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. The tax collector did not lift up his eyes. I'm on the top of page 33. The tax collector did not lift up his eyes because of his awareness of shame. Like you said, he was so overwhelmed by his guilt that he did what? He just beat his chest. So if you look at verse 13, it says, But the tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. What that literally says is, God, have mercy on me, the sinner. And that should be our prayer. God, have mercy on me, the sinner. Because I'm not good. I sin, and we need to ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. If we approach sin in this way, there will always be someone who sins more than us. So we will never truly feel the weight of our sinfulness because we compare ourselves. When you look in that mirror, you compare yourselves to others. I do this. I do this. I have this. I'm this. Um, I don't do like that one does. I've definitely not done that. I would never do that, but they do. <laughs> the weight is not what gets us to heaven. Our good outweighing our bad is that right relationship with God. And being justified before God. Jesus said that the tax collector went home justified before God. So what does this justification mean? What does that mean? 
that he went justified before God. He went home right with God. Now, how many of us can look in that mirror and say, I'm right with God? Can you look at that mirror right now and say that? I am right with God. God put sinners right with himself, not only pardoning them, but accepting them and treating us as righteous. I want you to look at the bottom of 33 because I can't um, say it better than this. It says the Pharisee was trying to justify himself by his good deeds. The tax collector knew he could not justify himself. While the Pharisee couldn't see his need for grace because of his self-righteous pride, the tax collector could only see his need. If we want God's grace, we must first see our need for grace. So when you look in that mirror, do you see your need for grace? And look at it and say, God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. All right, our last scripture is just reiterating the importance of all people. That everyone in Jesus' sight is significant. Because I think deep down, we think of ourselves as better than other people. And when you look in that mirror, you sometimes say some of those things. All right, well, let's look at the, the next childlike faith is the title of this scripture. People were bringing infants to him so that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw that, they rebuked him. Jesus, however, invited them. Let the little children come to me and don't stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. I want you to think about the relationship between a child and a parent. Tell me some of the, the words that describe that relationship. That's the first one that comes to my mind. You know what I think about when I think about trust? You know how daddies throw the kids up? And the kid says, do it again. You know, and they know that he's going to catch them. They, don't, they have complete trust in him. Or they're swinging or whatever they're doing. They have complete trust. What else? Describes that relationship between honor. them. Say it again. Honor. 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 They honor their parents. Unconditional. Unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unconditional everything. That's right. A child is completely comfortable with his or her dependence on their father. Exactly. Or mother. Completely okay with mm -hmm. That's right. We should be completely okay with our dependence yeah. on God. Mm -hmm. But how many of us are not? Like that Pharisee. He took it all into his hands. We should be like a little child. Um, and I don't know why this comes to my mind, but you know the faith that a child has in Santa Claus? I love that. You know, I love it when kids believe in Santa Claus and they know he's going to bring them things. And do you know why they believe? Why do kids believe? Because we told them. Exactly. And they had complete trust and faith in us that what we said was the truth. That's the kind of faith and trust we need to have in our Heavenly Father. And it just, I don't know, it just makes my heart, like right now my heart is just like full. Because if, if we could just be like little children with our faith in Jesus, like children have faith in their parents and faith in Santa Claus and have that relationship, that trust, that honor. All right, on the bottom of 34, it says, Jesus welcomed the children, encouraged them to be brought to him. Once again, he welcomed the insignificant and the overlooked. The kingdom of God belongs to those who are in, in need. The kingdom belongs to those who are like children, to those who are valued little in society. They are reliant on their parents for their sustenance and the tax collector as the tax collector was on God.
for mercy and grace. We need to rely on our Father just the way children rely on their father and their mother. All right, so if you look on page 35, we're going to close it out. And I like this is a great closing to this lesson. Uh, right under the bold green highlighted part, I'm not going to read that first. I want to read this. And I want you to truly think, if you have the book, I want you to look at it and look at these words. All who desire to enter God's kingdom must enter with a childlike humility and faith. So when you look at yourself, do you see someone in God's kingdom with that childlike humility and faith? Or do you see someone proud like the Pharisee? Are we like these little children? When you look at that, look in that mirror right now. Everybody look. Do you see someone who's humble? Do you see someone who's dependent? Do you see someone who's trusting? Because that's what we need to see in us. And that other people need to see in us. Just as children look toward their parents in dependence, trust, hope, humility, God calls us to look to him just like that as our father. We are completely dependent on God's grace. Now, as you look in the mirror, I want you to think about this as we close. Look at your phone. Look at your mirror. Who does God see? Who does God see in that mirror? A child in need. John said a child in need. Who do people see? Because you don't often look at yourself in the mirror. Maybe once in the morning as you're getting ready, and that's it. But who do people see on a daily basis? The next question, do you talk the talk, but more importantly, do you walk the walk? Do you do the right things for the right reasons? And most importantly, do others see Jesus in you? All right, if we sing this song in uh, Praise and Worship, The Good Father, and that last paragraph says, the good news is God is a good father. In Christ, we are given all the riches of his kingdom, and none of us deserve it. A tremendous cost was paid so that we could be adopted into God's family and have the right to cry out to him, Abba, Father. We may never become ungrateful children. May we never approach our Heavenly Father as though we deserve anything because of our merit. Let's be honest about ourselves like the tax collector. Let us always come to God as a child would to his loving parent. And I'll leave you with this. Every time you look at the mirror, I want you to look at who does God see me as? What do people see me as? What does my heart look like on the inside? And to make sure if we're talking the talk, that we walk the walk. All right. Are there any comments or closing comments that anybody would like to share? All right. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for just opening our eyes to this lesson this morning. Um, it's a familiar scripture that we've all read. But hopefully this morning, like with me, you know, when I'm studying, I get so much more out of it, I'm sure, than my listeners got this morning. But dear God, just thank you for what we were able to read, what we were able to get from this lesson, that we are to come to you as a child with loving faith and humility and trust and honor. And that we will, in everything we do and say, do to please you 
so that other people will see you in us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you all have a great week, and please pray for us. We do have all the kids coming back this week. Somebody said, did it feel like a circus this week? It really did. <laughs> but having kids in the building, it felt like the first day I had ever opened that school building.